we are talking about women in manufacturing. Yeah. It is a vital uh, factor to talk about, especially being, uh, you know, one of the government's big four agenda. Uh, let's look at how the market is like. Uh, women in business, do we have enough women in the manufacturing sector? And uh, probably what areas uh, could you possibly point out uh, that women have widely ventured into? Um, thanks for, for that question. And uh, you've rightly pointed out that uh, the number of women in the manufacturing sector is negligible, mm -hmm. to say the very least. Um, mm -hmm. I think we, we have been trying to, as, as the association, we've actually been trying to find out mm -hmm. and map out where the women in manufacturing are in the country. Mm -hmm. uh, we are finding that a lot of women are in food and beverage sectors mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, textile and apparel sectors where you find you know there's a lot of fashion and mm -hmm. and and but uh, what we call primarily uh, historically male male dominated uh, sectors mm -hmm. uh, like um, construction um, or mining mm -hmm. or steel or engineering mm -hmm. you find very uh, very little a very little number of women sure. uh, they are less and if they are there they're not there in the um, in the in the in the levels that are decision making levels mm -hmm. so, and uh, maybe as a lady you know yes. having been in the manufacturing sector have you yeah. uh, probably tried to find out yeah. what could be the reason why we don't have many uh, women venturing into uh, such sectors like you named them yeah i think w when we talk even about the food sector where you mm -hmm. find a lot of women you will see that there are many in the cottage industries and many in small to medium, mm -hmm. and medium is also very negligible, mm -hmm. and none in the large, uh, very few in the large players, mm -hmm. uh, playing in the large areas. Mm -hmm. um, one of the reasons is a cultural issue. Mm -hmm. So many women are told, uh, even by their families, mm -hmm. that this is not a woman's mm -hmm. place. This you is cannot, a man's job. Yeah, you cannot, what, what do you mean you want to get into manufacturing? Why mm -hmm. can't you just do other things that mm -hmm. women are doing why why like there's that curiosity and that already that pushback from mm -hmm. society mm -hmm. that this is not an area that you should be venturing but i also think that we they have very few role models to look up to mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. there's very few women that you can be told look, oh look it's a you know, let's say in Kenya we have very few, Tabitha Karanja or Flora mm -hmm. Mutahi. So there are very few that you can be told, oh, look, whoever went into this and they made it and they're now big. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a historical issue. There are also um, structural institutional issues, like, for example, lending. Mm -hmm. When you go to banks, I think theoretically, mm -hmm. they think that they are lending to women in the manufacturing sector, mm -hmm. theoretically. Mm -hmm. In practice, they find it very difficult to go to the bank and uh, put out their collateral and say hey I want to get into manufacturing with this because mm -hmm. most of them probably don't own that collateral sure so it will be important to find alternatives around collateral that can be issued mm -hmm. for capital mm -hmm. so the manufacturing sector in and of itself is quite difficult right mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. but it's even more difficult for women and young women who want to try and get into into the sector mm -hmm. yeah and especially now that we're looking at modern technology yes. now the Kenya Association of Manufacturers previously uh, uh, you know, launched uh, women in manufacturing program. Yes. And uh, as you said earlier, we have very many women in the SMEs, in the small medium enterprises, uh, businesses, and uh, these are women who need a platform to network. Mm -hmm. They need a lot of support, both emotional as well, as to sustain their businesses. So who does it target, especially uh, the women in manufacturing program? Okay, so first of all, let me say the Women in Manufacturing Program, there's a context as to how it came up mm -hmm. because it was, uh, it was developed or it was instituted by our former chair lady, who's Flora Mutai. She was the first ever chair lady mm -hmm. at Kenya Association of Manufacturers. Mm -hmm. We are now celebrating 60 years of existence. Oh, wow. And she has been the first and the only woman. Mm -hmm. So just to point to the dire situation mm -hmm. of the lack of women in the sector. And so we had to take advantage mm -hmm. of Flora being in this position at that time. Mm -hmm. So when she launched it, the then Minister, uh, Cabinet Secretary of Gender in 2017, thought it was a very brilliant idea for us to start looking into interventions mm -hmm. for women in this sector. Mm -hmm. So it does target uh, women in women entrepreneurs and women in the corporate spaces mm -hmm. because sometimes we talk about women in manufacturing and we forget there are women in factory floors mm -hmm. working. There are women in those corporate spaces. We mm -hmm. want them 
to help us to change situations that can make both uh, women in corporate and women entrepreneurs successful in the mm -hmm. sector. Mm -hmm. So they can't do without each other. Mm -hmm. So both the corporate and the entrepreneurial space are interlinked and they overlap in the ways that they benefit each mm -hmm. other. So that is one of the reasons we, 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 we came up with the Women in Manufacturing Program. Mm -hmm. I think another reason is just to, to talk to government and to tell government, look, we need to start mapping out who these women are. Mm -hmm. Because for the most part, I think the argument is that the restrictions for women to get into the manufacturing sector are cultural. Mm -hmm. So if they're cultural, it's very difficult to kind of find policy issues to address them. Mm -hmm. But this is what we are trying to do because we are a policy advocacy group is trying to tell government, okay, let's look at these cultural issues mm -hmm. and let's look at a way to make policy out mm -hmm. of these issues. Mm -hmm. So actually under the Women in Manufacturing program, we are now beginning to carry out a study, a mm -hmm. survey of the women in manufacturing. Yeah. Exactly the questions you're asking, where are they? Mm -hmm. Which sectors are they? Which sectors should they be in, mm -hmm. in order to make an impact and in the economic contribution that we are looking for? Mm -hmm. Because they are 52% of our population. Mm -hmm. So if 52% is not bringing the same economic contribution as the other half, yeah. then they, we are going wrong as mm -hmm. a country mm -hmm. somewhere. So Rightly put. Yes, and, yes. Uh, you know, uh, that means that one of the focus right now is to demystify the cultural practices, uh, you know, that is uh, ongoing. Uh, we need to break that down yes. and, uh, you know, let women do what they can. Yes. We introduce them to these networks and into a knowledge sort of ecosystem that then they will be able to use this knowledge to nurture their businesses. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, on another level, which is why the study will be important, mm -hmm. is that we will try and figure out ways around this cultural issues mm -hmm. again as I say yeah maybe should we begin to entice the government to look at uh, or rather to to talk to the government to entice private sector mm -hmm. to look at quota systems for private sector so if you have a certain number of women in your board for example mm -hmm. then you get something from the government mm -hmm. some incentive mm -hmm. to include to be inclusive mm -hmm. so those are some of the things that we want to work around mm -hmm. in future mm -hmm. Um, so knowledge, uh, as you said, yes. is a major factor, yes. you know, before we even come to, you know, funds. But again, to keep a company or a business running, now funds come in. Yes. Uh, they, you know, business people need to purchase uh, machines. Uh, they need to employ people uh, and keep it running. But there are lots of challenges that, uh, you know, they face, especially uh, lack of funds. Okay, lack of knowledge as well. Uh, maybe you could share with us, you know, uh, what women bring out uh, most as the main challenge in venturing into uh, these businesses, you know, the manufacturing sector to be precise. Mm. Funding is actually two of the key things, is mm -hmm. knowledge and funding. Mm -hmm. And funding is one of the most practical obstacles that women find as they try to grow their businesses, mm -hmm. whether it's in manufacturing or any other sector. Mm -hmm. Manufacturing is, is, is much more difficult mm -hmm. because you find that capital for manufacturing is actually expensive Very all around, expensive. whether it's for women or mm -hmm. just, just generally in the mm -hmm. sector. Mm -hmm. And so for women, there's also now that we have to consider the bias factor. Mm -hmm. So you walk into a bank, you want to start a cheap processing factory, mm -hmm. And there's questions already, mm -hmm. because I am looking at you, how you're dressed, how you're spoken, mm -hmm. what age are you, sure. and I'm already dismissing the your, cultural your, your, factor. Exactly, comes in it again. just comes in into mm -hmm. these institutions. Mm -hmm. So I think sensitizing institutions, and, and, and I believe that's what part of people who drive SDGs have mm -hmm. been doing, just sensitizing institutions yeah. into inclusion and diversity, and that the fact that diversity is not just a political statement. Mm -hmm. We are not just saying this to be politically uh, correct. Mm -hmm. We are just telling you that it actually does make a difference to your ROI, mm -hmm. and it does bring innovation to your business. Mm -hmm. And so I think just changing the way uh, institutions changing the way they perceive um, applications made by women, especially financial institutions, mm -hmm. but also making them practical. So as I said, in theory, mm -hmm. most of them believe that they're offering this uh, help to women. Mm -hmm. But then you will find on the ground, women are telling a different story. So mm -hmm. there's a disconnect. Yeah. And where's the disconnect? So maybe the institution should probably 
you know, come out of their offices and just walk around this women's businesses, see what you have to face. Mm -hmm. As a woman out there, the environment for you is much more difficult. Sure. You have to look after your security, mm -hmm. maybe twice as much as mm -hmm. a man's company. Mm -hmm. you, you know, the hours that you're paying, maybe the, the women who are working in your factory floor, mm -hmm. you have to look at their hours, you have to cater for certain things mm -hmm. that, that, that are tailored towards making women comfortable and retaining mm -hmm. them in mm -hmm. their workplace. So I I think just looking at those issues will change the perception of yeah. the institutions that are doing the lending mm -hmm. for them to be awake to the realities that women are facing in business mm -hmm. and then begin to tailor their lending programs and their lending schemes mm -hmm. towards this. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, usually we've had this phrase of women power, let's support each other. And, you know, as you said, uh, you know, being a woman entrepreneur in an environment that is not very friendly, again, can be difficult. Now, there is also this notion where where you know, many think that women cannot make it in business or they are not strong enough to run a company or a business or even venture into uh, sectors like manufacturing sector. Uh, what can you say uh, has been your, okay, as Kenya Association of Manufacturers, mm -hmm. uh, what can you say that you're proud of uh, and say that yes, we, uh, we are proud that we've given back to the women in the society? Okay, so I think a lot of that thinking, and if I can just digress a little bit, there's mm -hmm. just a lot of um, patriarchy in the way that we frame mm -hmm. the things that women can do, sure. and which is something that we need to just leave behind as mm -hmm. a society. Yeah. And especially as a country, if we want to reach our economic goals, we have to change the way we are thinking. Mm -hmm. So for example, the Big Four Agenda, let me just talk about that for a second. Yeah, because very important. The Big Four Agenda, we are supposed to live from the 8.4% mm -hmm. where GDP contribution of manufacturing, which is where we are at right now, mm -hmm. to 15%, which I'm sure has been mentioned, it will require 36% annual growth. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a double digit annual growth that we are not currently mm -hmm. even achieving, even close to. Mm -hmm. So what this means is that we will require a different way of thinking mm -hmm. as a country. And this is one of the ways that we change our thinking. Um, one of the things that affect us is a sh shortage of skills. Uh -huh. If we have a skills gap and we are not including the women in this country who can um, at contribute to that, mm -hmm. to that deficiency and help us frog leap into mm -hmm. the development that we are looking for, then we are, we are really failing catastrophically. Mm -hmm. So we need to change the way we are thinking in mm -hmm. order for us to achieve this very ambitious growth. It's possible, but we need to involve everybody, mm -hmm. all hands on deck, because everybody can do everything. Mm -hmm. um, as the Association of Manufacturers, let me say that our biggest membership right now, the biggest portion of our membership is the SMEs. Mm -hmm. And the SMEs, you find that most of the SMEs, statistically, even in the country, yeah. is women. Mm. And so I think as the Association of Manufacturers, what we've tried to do is to provide a nurturing environment for mm -hmm. our SMEs, do, uh, giving them peer-to-peer -peer learning programs, introducing them, as I said, we have a mentoring program mm -hmm. where we have large companies mentoring smaller ones. Mm -hmm. So introducing them to such companies so that they can learn um, international standards of operation mm -hmm. so that they can be able to then scale their businesses and compete across the border. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you find we are not able to compete across the border because we don't know what the world is looking for. Sure. But if the multinationals can teach us, this is what the world is playing at mm -hmm. right now, this is where we are playing at in terms of manufacturing, mm -hmm. then SMEs are able to catch on and grow. And, and I would like to say really, uh, in terms of business, I think as a population, we are very, you know, we are very eager. Mm -hmm. We are very eager to go. We, we just need the, the tools and the support and the political will mm -hmm. to to start running mm -hmm. and, to, and to get things going. Uh -huh. Yes. And, uh, you know, Kenya has been grappling, you know, with unemployment. Yes. Uh, millions of youth are not employed. And uh, looking at uh, the manufacturing sector is uh, one of those sectors where there is an opportunity for the unemployed. Uh, so uh, in a sector also that contributes to about 11.3% GDP. In terms of job opportunities, uh, what opportunities are there for women? 